Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon back with a new Ionic tutorial and this week we're gonna talk about um, translation, right? We're gonna talk about translating your app uh, for multiple languages. So this is also known as localization and we will build a simple app with a little switch where we can choose between two languages that we've previously set up and we will instantly localize all the strings from one to the other and also store the information. So let's do this. I've already created a blank new Ionic app and I just um, tried to um, use these readme files to give you an idea what we did so we can start as quick as possible. So I created another page for our language popover and also a service that will manage the language and the user selected language. So then most important, we're going to use the ngx translate module. You're going to need to install the core package and also an HTTP loader so we can actually load the local files. And finally, also Ionic storage. If you want to persist the selected language of the user, if you just want to use like uh, one language for a user, you could also use the globalization um, plugin from Cordova and then retrieve the current um, language settings of the user and set that language. So then you don't need Ionic storage. All right, what I did as well is I copied in two little nice icons. Um, you can find the link in the article, which is linked below this video. Uh, and also I created two files for localization. So for German and for English. And inside of those localization files, you can uh, actually have a nice structure. So for example, you could structure it by um, the different pages, like you have a home page, you have an about page, a menu page. So you can easily find all the strings of your application in the right places. And we can later target them with their path. Or you could also use like an alert or messages or however. Just make sure that you got some structure in here. So. These are German, these are English. We will take a closer look at uh, them in a second as well. So let me close this. And once you've done all of this, we can get started. We can delete the home page actually. So in that case, uh, no, I shouldn't have deleted it. No, we need this. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to do this. Um, damn. Um, actually, I wanted to keep the home page, so um, I just create it again and remove it. Sorry. Um, you can keep the home page, okay? Um, but what we do first is going to the app module and setting up a few things. So first of all, we need a bunch of imports. So I'll bring them in. Um, these are the things we installed. Um, no, here are the things we installed from the ngx package. And then we also need the HTTP client. You will see why and Ionic storage. Um, that's actually the easiest of those things. So we can directly call this one. So then we need to initialize the translate module and also call for root. But we also need to pass in some more information and especially we need to define a custom loader that loads our local files. And to load the local files, we're going to have to create a new function and this one's called create translate loader. And here we inject the HTTP client. So that's why we have uh, the real HTTP client up here and not only the HTTP client module, which uh, of course um, goes here as well. So in this create translate loader function, we can now return a new translate HTTP loader. So that's why we installed the um, HTTP loader package. And in here, we now have to specify which HTTP client to use, uh, the prefix of the file, which is actually inside our assets IATN folder. And then the suffix, which is um, in our case dot JSON. So now when the translate module is using this functionality, it will look in this folder for file with JSON and also in between it will have the language code. So DE or EN or whatever you got um, in there. So then we are gonna um, add this function to the loader and we will use provide, uh, we've used this actually in 
Uh, other scenarios, for example, with ionic MOX, or you can see it in here as well, it's basically the same. But this time we want to provide for the translate loader. Uh, we're going to use the factory, which we just added up there, create translate loader. And finally, because we got the HTTP client injected in here, we also have to specify it as a dependency. So um, the setup process of Angular uh, doesn't crash. All right. Now the translate loader factory is set up. Uh, we got the Ionic storage. We got the HTTP client. I think we're good so far. So let's go back to uh, the actual home page, module, TypeScript, everything. So for the home module or for basically any lazy loaded page where you want to use the translate um, stuff, you're going to add the translate module from ngx translate. Um, that looks right to me. Um, I'm just looking at my written tutorial and I think I missed something. Uh, okay, yeah, of course I missed something because we created the service and I forgot about the service. So um, you can also, of course, directly use the NGX uh, stuff in your page, but we want to have this little switch functionality. So we're going to set up a little service and I will actually bring in the code because this is a quick win and it's not quick if we make the video a half an hour. So what we're going to do inside of our language service is First of all, have a few functions. Uh, actually, we don't need the platform anymore. So we can get rid of that. Um, and the first thing is to set the initial app language. And this is the function we're going to call from the app component. Actually, I can use this, right? Would that make me look uh, pretty fancy if I use this stuff from Visual Studio Code? Maybe, maybe it does, maybe. So in here, we're going to call this dot, um, what's the name language service, language service, and then this language service set initial app language. So once the app is loaded, we're going to dive into this function. Uh, we're going to try to get from the translate service, which is the NGX stuff, the current browser language, for example, as a fallback and basically set this as a default language. So that's just the fallback in case we don't find anything else. But then we will also look in the Ionic storage for the language key, which we've created up here, uh, if the user has already selected a language previously. So in that case, we will uh, set it uh, locally. So that's just keeping reference so we can use it in the popover and set language will then call translate use. That's basically the most important part of NGX translate. Whenever you want to switch languages, just call translate use with the language. So yeah, and whatever it is, and then you're good to go. All the other stuff is just for our own application. And also this little function that returns uh, the text value and the image path is only for our popover. So. Uh, get browser language of ngx translate set default is cool and also use all right now we're calling this in the beginning and i think now it's time to move on for the home module remember you need to import it for all the modules of your pages and then um, i think we should go to the view directly and let's begin maybe we should oh my mouse speed what happened come back um, maybe you should start by looking at the actual keys as well. So we want to display home title and that's super easy. We can type home dot title and then we can use the translate pipe on this. And if we open our app, we might be able to see uh, language service is not a function. Mm. Um, actually, I think it is a function, my dear compiler. Um, mm -hmm. Well, 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 maybe we should reload this. Um, anyway, um, while the reload takes place, we can already continue. So we got different options to use the translate of strings in our view. Um, we also might need a little come on thank you 
we might need a little button. Um, so let's add a button to our toolbar um, just to open the language pop over in a second. And there we go. Actually, my browser language seems to be German. So that's why we see Startseite. Um, so this is, again, a nice little German tutorial with Simon. So we got the Startseite. And if we changed it now, so let me use English as a default. We're going to see that it's not the Startseite anymore, but now it will be... Ta -da -da -da. Da -da. Come on. Um, well, maybe I already got the key stored, which is pretty bad. So in that case, we're going to have to change it in here, which will be called. Might have tried out the code before we did the video. So now we're back to home. And if you don't trust me, this is the home key. And here we got Startseite. Okay. Um, so we've seen that we can use the translate pipe and we can use this on a few different other ways. Let me bring it in so we can talk about this. So basically, this was the most basic example. Then if we use something uh, with a value inside, we can actually pass parameters to the translate. And for that, we need to create those parameters. So let's just say name Simon and uh, of course, this doesn't have to uh, be called params or name, but because we use params in here and where's my JSON file? And name in here in the actual um, localized string, we need to use those keys, of course. So if we use home greeting, you see that we got the ability to replace this. We could have multiple things in here but we just pass in the name. So that's pretty cool way to replace something in a string as well. Um, actually, this is the same like before. It's just a different syntax with a directive. So in that case, you got to pass in to the translate um, property. Um, this is again the home greeting and the params now specified as well. So just another way of using this. Then also important maybe, if you get HTML code in your um, translation, so like here, um, which is uh, something I hope you can say, otherwise um, you're not allowed to watch the rest of the video. So this is du bist episch. Uh, and in English, that might be your epic, actually. Maybe you already got that up front. So we can see that this part is now big. We got the line breaks before. So if we use inner HTML and then the translate pipe inside, we can actually also use the HTML code. Finally, for the button, uh, that's again just a, a super easy translate. But now we got two more options. So um, what we got is actually we need to open our popover and we open an alert. So quite a bit of code. Let's start with the popover, which needs the private popover controller. There we go. And also the language, language popover page. And I think right now this is not working because um, we haven't used the language popover in our app module. So if you want to use it as a popover page and you using the component there, you're going to have to import the popover page module in the main module as well. So now it should look like this and it works. We also want to show an alert. So um, private alert. Oh, and of course the popover is not yet finished. Okay. Um, the alert controller. And for the alert controller, this is now the second interesting way of using the translate library. So this time we're using the translate service directly in here, um, not through our service. And you can call instant on the translation, which returns a translation instantly. Way who had have thought. Um, 
This is especially interesting if you're using it in like an alert, a toast, whatever component that you need to display from code and you immediately need the translation. So simply call instant and then again use the keys that you've created, alert, header and message, alert, header and message, use the right path and then you're good to go. So now we're only left with creating language popover so I can actually show you that we are able to switch between the languages. So let's move to the language popover page, use the popover controller in here as well. Um, and for the ng on in it, we are gonna set languages to an empty array. We will have a selected language and all of this information of course now comes from our, um, you know, from the language service. Um, language service, there we go. So go ahead, this dot languages, no it's always taking the wrong thing, every damn time. So language service get languages, this is just to get the array of information that we need and this dot selected equals language service selected. All right, and finally we want to be able to select a language which is now pretty easy because we just have to call set language on our language service and then dismiss the popover again. And for the final view, which is now just some view, um, we only need the list, we need buttons for our languages and on click we want to select them. We got the image in front, we got the text and we got a little check mark if the language is selected. So now we're ready. And we see currently our language is set to English. Hey Simon, welcome, welcome with the directive, the HTML code and the alert shows the English message. If we open our popover, we see that German is selected. Oh, did I? Mm, still got the, oh yeah. <laughs> that would have tricked me quite good. I'm very good at tricking myself. So, ah, okay, by default, we are now in the German language, which is selected from the storage. And if we switch over to English, all the strings are now translated again to English and to German. So, Startseite, hallo Simon, willkommen in der Ionic Academy, du bist episch, Alarm anzeigen, Fehler, es gab ein Problem bei der Operation. All right, and that's enough. For the German lesson today, that's also the end of today's quick win. Um, we're now able to create localized applications with Ionic 4 and using NGX Translate, set up your language files, uh, use a nice structure in them, use either the pipe or the directive in the view, and in your logic, use the service and call instant if you instantly need the result of the call. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe below this video, help me grow this channel to 100,000, which is my main goal currently. Um, still a long way to go, but I count on you. And of course, if you want to get more great Ionic videos, um, check out the rest of this channel. So I'll catch you in one of those.